They say abuse is inevitable when purpose is unknown or words to that effect. So my advocacy this week is, what is a government good for? What is our government good for? And I've often asked myself this question, sometimes several times in a day as I contemplate life and living in this country. What really is our government good for? Not security, suffering there, economy, jobs, welfare, health. The average person living in a city like Lagos or Enugu or Kaduna or anywhere routinely has to make provisions for water they drink, borehole, you must have a generator for power, no matter how small or how big, you have to contribute to your neighborhood watch, build high walls, and invest in study burglary bars, and, and even you know, invest in four-wheel drive vehicles just because of the condition of the roads and so on and so forth. So we're, we're all living like mini independent states, and indeed under siege by our own almighty state and federal government. I mean, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has exposed the failures of governments, and indeed, to some extent, the strengths of some other governments across the world. Some countries we used to admire and look up to clearly have failed their people. And I'm not talking about Nigeria here. But understanding globally has, has been reduced, um, and at least in our eyes. So here, here is my thing, though. Um, if you look at the countries over the last, say, six months who have demonstrated capacity in dealing with this particular pandemic, you see something, there's a, there's a tread. And you see that the countries who are doing well are countries who um, have this almost liberal, more democratic um, um, leaning. And to some extent, you find that they're all governed by women. I don't know if it's something that we need to talk about more. Um, from New Zealand, Germany, it's just, it's been, it's been women who are powering these countries. Um, and Taiwan, for example, Canada, well, it's not a woman, but He's doing a good job as well there. Um, but there's a thing, there's a thread that connects all of them. Um, so for us here in Nigeria, our story has been more like a chronicle of a, of a tragedy foretold. I remember very early on, we saw, we heard news reels of ministers going to the airports before the pandemic saying, oh, we've got it, everything covered. Um, we're ready for it. Um, no one should panic. But here we are, months later. And when the wind or the gale of corona blew, we were all exposed. Exposed was our incompetence and unseriousness. Clearly, we're out of our depth. And as I say, when, and let me borrow Liberos here, when it says, when the wind blows, we'll see foul nyash, something like that. We're, we're dealing with this corona crisis. But if you look at it, the health system that we have, which was suffering previously, right now, everybody is geared towards providing for the pandemic. But no one, when you're not hearing dis discussions around um, how do we put in place a more robust health care system for the country? But, so everything is about providing test kits, PPE, isolation centers, and treatment centers. But there's an eerie siren, silence around how to implement a holistic health care system that can provide care beyond the pandemic. In fact, even more worrying is that daily tragic stories of patients dying from lack of care, not from COVID-19, but from other treatable ailments. Hospitals are rejecting patients. It appears that while everyone is focused on COVID-19, more people are dying daily from the crass incompetence of our government's inability to think beyond this COVID industry. So it is perhaps to say that when corona goes away, the enthusiasm for funding healthcare and indeed education will probably die. I don't know, if, but that's the reality we're seeing since there's no plan for it. So back to my question, what is our government good for? Or perhaps maybe I should end it this way. What should, the, the question should be, how do we make our government do good for us? And that is really my, my, my challenge to us today. Mm. Uh, I may not be able to answer that question, but let me at least talk about the, the aspect you raised about mm -hmm. the women. Um, I think you know, when you find government, because there's a saying, and I think it's um, Abraham Lincoln that said it, the government for the people, by the people, of the people. Um, if government is representative of the people, then you're less likely to have this kind of abuse. Yeah. Um, so when you have people in, I, I know women are not the minority normally in terms of numbers, but they are the minority in terms of representation. So when you have a woman show up at the table, she has known what it feels like to be neglected, to be the underdog. So she's less likely, that's my impression, to mm -hmm. abuse it. So she's more likely to be thinking, okay, putting herself in the shoe of the people she's serving. She's more because she knows yeah. how it is to be ignored. And so you, you should have, like even part of why I enjoy the advocate is the variety. So even if one person wants to have an agenda, because you have different 
people from different backgrounds, there's a check. But when you have government you know, being held down by one type of people, you know, if you have maybe in the UK where they have people coming from Eton or wherever they come from, Oxford, then you don't have a representative government. You know, if you have the male population, they get very comfortable in that there space and they're not actually looking to be creative. So I really think the only reason these people have thrived now is that they're looking to be creative. They may not have all the answers, yeah. but they're actually looking for it. They're looking for ways to serve the people. So the will is there. You know, so, but when the will is not there, yes, you, what we're left with now is to do the hard work of chasing them, flogging them, but they don't actually want to serve us. You know, so you're going to have to police them all the way. Whereas if you've got people who are intentional about serving us, they'll be looking for ways now. They'll be overshooting your expectations. And that's where I want to leave it. So how do we make our government good for us? To establish that, I think we we'll first need to understand why our government exists mm -hmm. the way that it does, and then from there work our way to how to change that. So, currently, as I was saying before, the Nigerian government, uh, ordinarily, a government is supposed to focus on a few major things: uh, provision of uh, a legal framework, uh, a justice system, law enforcement, foreign policy. Uh, just those basic things, maybe healthcare and education, subsidize those things to an extent. And then everything else is left to the people to sort themselves out. The economy is left to the people. In Nigeria and in much of Africa, the government is an economic entity. The government dominates the economy. So the focus of government is not on providing services, it's not on providing value to people. The focus on government is on putting out contracts. It's, it's, on, it's, it's on enriching the people who are in government or people who are linked to, to government. the government, which goes back to the original, the advocacy that I, I put up today about us versus them. The structure of the post-colonial post African states is still based on the liberation movement, the anti-colonial uh, liberation movement. So then there was, a, there was an enemy. So after kicking out the colonialists, then it became how do we protect ourselves from their exploitative capitalist system. So we do this thing called statism, where the state enwraps everything. So you know, instead of opening up the economy to the people, the state is this big brother that is holding everything. And unfortunately- No, but apparently what, what we have yeah. now is mirrored on the American system. <laughs> so they said, I, yeah, in, so reality, that's, that's, in reality, in reality yeah. we're a very state dominated yeah. entity, not just in Nigeria, but across the continent. Now, 50, is 60 years Is that not the function later, of the mindset of people there, not really the structure itself? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but it was, so again, something I have to mention is that the post-colonial African state was also configured based on the Soviet states, not just the American yeah, state, as you think. For, for me, really, um, like, you know, when you were going through advocacy, what just came to mind was that, that song, what it is good for, absolutely nothing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, and then you ask yourself, what's the Nigerian government good for? Absolutely nothing. And then the only answer to it is what um, Aisha had said. Yeah. The way we go to churches and mosques, if all of us, you know, we have cleared the road for Jaga Jaga, let us now be the Jaga Jaga. It's the way we go to Redeem Camp, let all of us gather and stay on the express and say, today we will not leave until ABC. So for me, I think that, um, uh, you know, just a synthesis of all of this is uh, the way I see this, the reason why I put this together was to look at, put this advocacy together was to look at it from the point of view of that citizens themselves have to make a demand. And just to echo what Liberos yeah. said, we need to make that demand and say this is what we expect. It's not just about voting, because voting is something you do once in four years. Yes. But it, you know, the, the daily, the, the regular grind, making that demand of government to say, we want this, this is our right. Not just every four years you vote. So I think that, 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 that is something that we need to, uh, we need to focus on. So, well, um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this week's episode. It's a wrap from, for, for us um, here today. We'll be returning next week, guys. Um, same time with much more to download. In the meantime, keep the conversation going on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag AdvocateNG on Twitter, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag AdvocateNG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. You've been watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa on DSTV channel 408. Um, go out there and keep advocating for a better society. Um, so it's bye from all, all of us in the studio. Bye bye. Peace. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking, it's that greed, it's that 
mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.